Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and I Man here from the Block Runner, and we got several things to talk about today. Yeah. So uh, before we do, let's uh, just check in with Bitcoin and let's check in with Ethereum, see what's going on. So Bitcoin is, uh, so it broke out this little wedge here, uh, but it doesn't officially break out until the day closes above it. That's good, though. Like that was an artificial breakout pumped by Elon Musk. Himself. That's right. Exactly. That, <laughs> so that's what a pump looks like. Um, like a fake out pump, but that's good. Like only Elon moving, could do this. Yeah. Cause yeah, moving Bitcoin is not an easy task. Yeah, for sure. But it definitely came off like, you know, the support of this like meme market we're seeing right now, you know, fueled by GameStop and whatnot in Robinhood. So yeah. People are just jumping around from meme to meme to see which one's going to pump next. Yeah. But, and the most recent meme was Doge, but I mean, that doesn't have a long lifespan. I mean, there's no reason yeah. to pump Doge whatsoever yeah from a fundamental value perspective right it's just 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 for the fun of it yeah it's, that's literally the whole point of doge. yeah it's for the meme every now and then yeah for, for whatever the fuck reason doge will just pump yeah yeah <laughs> it's literally like it's use case you know uh but check this out ethereum so this uh this ascending wedge which terminates in some some point in the infinity uh, you draw out, like you could draw out like uh, the top of this wedge just just real quick to give uh, you guys watching like a uh, an expectation date just draw a flat line on the top of this um these candles oh a flat line yeah sure 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 draw it out so that we can get like a date yeah so, so we can all keep an eye on it okay so what day is that where are these so days? at the worst date of february 19th that's the latest. That's the latest we can expect some kind of like breakout to the upside or downside in Ethereum. That's right. And it, yeah, until then, we're going to see like this extremely low volume, you know, consolidation move. Yeah. This, everyone, again, this is how TA works. We're all looking at this same, you know, ascending triangle. So we're all like skeptical of whether or not it's going to go up or down. Right. So nobody really wants to buy yet. Right. <laughs> but as soon as it breaks out, you, damn, yeah, that, that volume is going to really kick up. If it breaks down, same thing. Volume will kick up on the way down too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we still got at least two weeks, maybe um, roughly within that time frame. Something's going to happen. So just keep an eye on that. The most important thing we want to talk about is synthetics. Another boat that we missed. Um, that it, we can't go any. We can't go longer without talking about this because it's so fundamentally game changing for humanity to a certain extent mm -hmm. uh, because we're all used to stocks they open you know 8 30 in the morning they close at three o'clock or whatever it is uh, your time zone mm -hmm. and then you know you get to go home and chill and watch tv after uh, a full day of day trading right uh, but what synthetics does is in one use case is take those stocks right those assets and make them synthetic and therefore make them tradable 24 seven on the synthetics platform. Yeah. I guess like, like synthetic assets already exist, I think in the traditional finance world, but like, again, they're not openly tradable 24 seven, like, like, like a crypto token is like, we understand that as crypto traders and investors, like we don't sleep. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is a truly global market where ideally there's not as much regulation as there is like in the traditional finance space to where like, you know, governments can monitor trading activity so they can just confine it to a certain trading yeah. zone. Yeah. But yeah. So what's so cool about it is that we're using the same tools to synthetically represent these, these traditional financial assets, but bringing them our, our realm in a way so that yeah. now, now a whole audience of global traders has access to at least have some kind of exposure. And the reason why this is pinging our radar now is because silver that's right. It's like all over the news. <laughs> That's yeah. the next it's the next meme, right? Like apparently Wall Street bets is targeted the silver markets is like the next big short squeeze. You know what I mean? So I, I'm not gonna speculate whether or not there's any legs to this this thesis to where like if 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 we could all band together and just start buying silver together, we're gonna we're gonna collapse JP Morgan as if that's <laughs> like a good thing. <laughs> you know? Like we need to completely push over the entire legacy financial system so we can go straight into the Great Depression 2.0. Right, like, right, 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 right. Like that to me it doesn't seem like a good idea, but somehow this movement is gaining traction, I guess, you know. There's like a there's like a sentiment building of like anti establishment, anti Yeah, I mean it's it's I mean if if you haven't watched our podcast, we we went deep into this subject with uh, Wall Street bets, what it means that Everyone has this this collective power of actually pushing the market now. Yeah, that's true, man. And, and now there's, there, 
there's like awareness starting to you know disseminate throughout the population and yeah. they're starting to experiment with that power like what can we do next right. well, who should we fucking target and like you know punish after all the decades of punishment they've put on to us so now like jp morgan's on their radar because apparently somebody writes this this post that you know they're the biggest silver short squeezers on the planet or whatever not squeezer but like the, they have the most shorts on silver so let's fuck them just like we did games or not games that uh uh, Elvin Capital or Elvin and is. Citadel. Yeah. So again, I'm not here to endorse or to sh- shut down that party. <laughs> <laughs> they can do whatever they want. But regardless, what how however you, you think it's gonna play out, the point is you can get exposure to that price action through a crypto token now because of the synthetics platform, which is to me is mind blowing. Yeah. And so that crypto token is called a synthetic silver uh synthetic yeah. silver to synthetic usd and so this is the price of silver right now 29 dollars. and so i man let me ask you a question how do you get data real world data onto yeah. the blockchain for synthetics to actually make this a uh, viable product and actually tradable based on the real price of uh, of silver yeah it's got to be like reliable right like, right how, how would you like, do that i mean that's what these oracles are for dude another boat we missed another one okay. <laughs> another another one bites the dust yeah. <laughs> as we keep now that we're, we're starting to identify these things it's all starting to add up dude like yeah. it all makes sense yeah you know what i mean so what you're looking at here is like the chain link interface right that, that actually sh- it's it's showing the oracle network in action and yeah. actually like what they're the value they're producing you know as a network yeah because think about this so l- let me pose the question more so that you know we have everyone understand like the, the value of chain link if if you require like synthetics requires information that's not readily available on chain like a price or like a you know uh, a sensor a temperature out there in the world you you're you're needing to collect this data Mm -hmm. and so the question is how do i collect this data and make a product out of it like synthetics without trusting somebody to provide me this information i don't want to trust anyone i don't want i don't want i man to tell me that silver is worth 29 dollars, and i have to trust them so chain link emerged i don't know maybe two or three years ago and they solved this problem with with an idea called oracles and these oracles like for example chain layer fuse link forest they exist to to submit data that is required by different projects and that data they submit if it's wrong if it's collectively understood that link forest is producing values under or over then they effectively get slashed and they get penalized for providing invalid data and so with this consensus now you have an actual price of in this case silver at twenty nine dollars and seventeen cents, and so that that is the value of Chainlink, and pretty much almost like the majority of the crypto projects out there either are using Chainlink, can use Chainlink, or will use some some form of a Chainlink in Oracle. Yeah, well, like we're seeing tons of them starting to emerge, and that that begs the question: like, do we need more Oracles if Chainlink is already right. proving itself to be like it's a valid question, functional? And there's yeah, we were talking talking about it I, I, like that gut instinct i want to say like no like because from like a crypto investor perspective i always i always for some reason shun like the the, the copycats yeah yeah the copycats who are kind of like they're, they're piggybacking off of the you know the coattails of the first mover you yeah. know usually the, the, the first movers are the but I, I, in the space. I, I would I would push back a little bit on that i man because maybe there's oracles focused on the internet of things sector yeah I yeah, hundred percent agree. Yeah, yeah, just like, just like when Ethereum comes. Okay, Ethereum is the first mover on smart contracts. Just because Ethereum was the first mover, of course, it has a huge network effect. It doesn't mean. I mean, we're 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 witnessing the 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 flaws of a general purpose smart contract platform now, right? Like it's just there's too many different transactions happening at the same time is clogging the network. So yeah. it makes sense to actually make like niche specific blockchain products, like yep. you're saying, an IoT blockchain. So and the, but is if you could connect all that data to the main ethereum network then problem solved it's unclogging a lot of that 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 shit yeah 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 (laughs) shit from the tubes dude so i guess in the oracle space that's a good point like yeah maybe there's more niche data that the oracle network can be designed around yeah but also it's just good to have competition man yeah absolutely like i think as a as a sector as a space it's going to be nice to see like okay we got a consensus on the chain link oracle network as you know 
uh, and then let's let's go look at Dia. Are they saying the same thing? Yeah. You know, and then over like a ten year data span, which one has been most accurate over the last ten years? Right. You know, maybe Dia is ninety nine point eight percent accurate. Chainlink has been ninety seven point two. You know, like whenever we're talking about like financial investments here, like that little that makes a that's billions makes a big difference. Yeah, billions yeah. of dollars of differences there. Exactly. Like so, and without that competition, we'll, we'll never know whether or not these things are performing at like optimal levels. You right. know, so we need competition. So. so I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to shit on... On other oracles. On other oracles. Yeah. yeah. There's definitely a space in the market for them. Yeah, it's just we can't, we, we, we can no longer start dismissing projects just because they, at first glance, they're a copycat. Yeah. Right? They might understand something about Chainlink and oracles that we may not understand, and therefore they're solving a different problem that we're not aware of, which is sort of the point of why we're all here. We're trying to understand what the problems out there are and what solutions are being created to solve those problems because yeah. those are the projects that are actually going to do 100x right or 1000x because they're actually they're worth valuable yeah yeah they're <laughs> worth yeah, yeah yeah they're worth uh the investigation and worth you know why we're, we're talking about them but 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 by, by looking at what synthetics is doing with the silver market and this is just the beginning you know silver is just one of their first synthetic assets i'm, I'm envisioning this the synthetics exchange one day just flooded with you know tesla with the game stops with with apple with with facebook everything that people love to trade in the traditional finance world we're going to get a piece of that action too we don't have to open robin hood accounts anymore dude. and deal with centralized yeah. entities like Hell this is yeah. all a decentralized ecosystem dude that's the beauty of this all and yeah we were talking about this off camera like there's a possibility <laughs> this whole decentralized ecosystem could just swallow centralized finance as a like yeah. one day in the future because these 24-7 like synthetic instruments are better representations of the assets than than what we see like on Wall Street, you know? Yeah. You know, assets that trade within like a six hour trading window. And then but that's the thing, like sentiment behind them doesn't just end within those that six hour range, dude. Like yeah. people people get bullish and bearish on these assets like 24 7 yeah that's right yeah, just because the market's closed like shouldn't really have an impact on that like if we have if we have your synthetic assets that can trade all day every day then that's like a true representation of what the market is actually thinking yeah. at all times yeah 100 you know? percent. that's why bitcoin is so interesting because this has been trading 24 7 since 2009 mm -hmm. since january 2009 yeah and, and like this the price of bitcoin is is the truth right it, it is the value is what it is there's been no downtime for bitcoin for any 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 human to to start to strategize as to you know what the sentiment is going to be the next day just because they have six hours to think about it yeah exactly it's mind-blowing to see like the start of it so i don't think we're the type of channel who like makes price predictions too often but <sighs> Bitcoin to 200k, dude. I guess okay. I'm I'm full of shit, dude. We, we actually do that all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're actually always making predictions. So I don't know. To me, like just just the value proposition of what synthetics can bring to yeah. the crypto space, literally onboarding traditional finance into into decentralized finance. Yeah, let, let's put this into perspective. Like usually, I mean, we've talked about some lower cap coins. 2.4 billion dollar synthetics seems like pretty high but if you compare yeah. synthetics to like let's say apple right a two trillion dollar company that's a hundred x so why why apple well apple only sells phones software computers these guys are dabbling with one of the biggest industries on the planet and so eventually a two trillion dollar market cap is not unreasonable for something like this now that doesn't that's this is definitely not investment advice but i just want everyone to have some perspective yeah. As to what these projects are working on, because when you're close to the crypto industry and you see like these different projects at 2.4 billion, like you, you start missing the, the value through this, just the market, just looking at market caps. Mm -hmm. And so, so the value of synthetics is probably significantly higher than what you're seeing here is my point. Yeah. Like, like the fully matured version of this, yeah. of this idea of this protocol, like exactly what we're saying. Imagine like CoinGecko is just flooded with synthetic versions of, you know, Apple and Tesla and all yeah. these stocks we all love. Right. Yeah. Like if that's a whole different environment now, like now as like um, crypto retail traders, now you have to think like, Oh man, especially whenever these derivative products finish, 
you know, and we could start going long and short on things in a decentralized way. Maybe I'd rather just, uh, instead of exposing myself to the high volatile volatility risks of trading crypto, I could just trade the crypto version of, I don't know, Apple. Like yeah, that's a yeah. pretty, that's a pretty stable asset. It usually just goes up. Yeah. You know? So why not go long Apple, synthetic S Apple, you know what yeah. I mean? Synthetic Apple. And that's, that's going to be the nature of our market two, three, four, five years from now. You yeah, know? I think so too. Yeah, I mean, so what does that mean for the value of synthetics and the value of these derivatives platforms that are going to allow us to do this cap this type of trading? Right. You know, that's what you got to think about, and then you got to find your. I don't know. Like, the, I guess the hard part is finding like who's going to win and lose in in this kind of like like this arms race. You know, <laughs> this yeah. decentralization arms race. Like, who's going to get there first? So Kane, obviously, synthetics is a clear winner, right? Like for sure. Yeah, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. Kane, um, he's, uh, so he, I think he started synthetics, right? Kane. Yeah. He's the founder. He's a founder. So uh, he was just tweeting about this very issue that we were talking about how taking a, an asset that trades only for a short amount of time and then allowing it, allowing people to buy a synthetic version of it 24 mm seven. -hmm. And so he introduces a, a different project that we're going to be talking about soon called keeper and uh yeah. and and it, and it allows this ecosystem to start depending on each other almost and it, it's it's just interesting that uh you know we're we're starting to see this like ecosystem kind of grow but uh but yeah since Kane is talking about silver here and and, and it's meme ability that's coming up soon yeah for good reason just because he knows like silver dude silver is notoriously like the most boring of assets dude literally yeah. just crabs all day every day like just trade sideways yeah you know? but all of a sudden like because of this meme revolution we're seeing like it's in the news everybody wants to get their hands on silver i'm hearing like all the brokers are literally selling out of their like physical silver stock so yeah this is a perfect opportunity for Kane and friends, you know, over there at Synthetics. What do they call it? The Spartan Council or something like that? The Spartan Council, yeah. Pretty badass name for, for a governance team. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Spartan Council. So, yeah, we'll probably make future videos about this, too, because it's pretty interesting to see, like, governance in action, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is what I love seeing more than anything, you know? This this has always been, like, the most interesting part of crypto to me. The it's governance. Like, yeah, the, the the whole DAO infrastructure, you know, the governance part. Just because of what it what it could mean if 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 crypto manages to, you know, self govern. Yeah. yeah, like the implications of what that could mean for society in the future. You know, if we could figure out how to stop relying on other people to govern for us. Yeah, for <clears> sure. <throat> so yeah, let us know what you think about synthetics. Do you guys want to hear more about what we think are valuable tokens, or? Do you guys want to hear more shit tier tokens that could moon and like tomorrow? Let us know in the comments. Make sure you follow us at The Block Runner and also at Metazone.io. Like, subscribe, and yeah, we will see you tomorrow. All right, we're out. Later.